So now, there's, there's some condition we can apply to simplify a 3D problem to a 2D problem. And you probably are familiar with plane stress, plane strain problem. So I'll quickly go over that and uh, I'll show you how, what are the stress components you need or strain components you need to, uh, uh, to um, solve a, a plane problem. So first the stress, plane stress, and they are planar plate-like structure, like thin plate, thickness is constant, and the loading is in the XY plane. So I just take this one, and this plate, maybe there's internal load in it, the thickness is very, uh, and the Z is very, very s small, and it's a uh, uniform thickness. So you can say that all the stresses in Z direction, both normal stress and shear stress, are zero. And if you put these conditions into these equations, that you have sigma Z zero, tau Y Z zero, tau Z X zero, then you can actually reduce the total number of uh, strain to 3. So you'll have only in the x, that means you have only the planar problem, you have only the strain component in xy plane, nothing, no strain in the z direction. So we have normal strain in x, normal strain in y, and shear strain in xy plane. So these are the three strain components we need and uh, in our uh, plane stress problem. Similarly, oh, okay. So, uh, so what what else do you get? So, if we if we reduce your total six stress or strain to three components of stresses and strains, then ultimately the C and D matrices will also be reduced because remember that C and D matrices relate to stress and strain either in equation, in the form of equation eleven or twelve. But before it was six by six matrix, but. Uh, we had six components in a stress and six components in a strain. So if you reduce the number of stress and strain to three, the C will also be reduced to three by three matrix. So this is what you see here. Equation 13 gives you the value of C matrix and D matrix if you consider a plane stress problem. That means uh, these matrices are needed to convert stress to strain or a strain to stress. But the size is now small, three by three, not six by six. Similarly, for plane strain, these structures are really long in the z direction and loaded along the z direction or along the or transverse loading or along its length. So we can assume that the strain in the z directions are zero. Before it was in the plane stress cases, all the stresses in the z directions are zero, both normal and shear. But for plane strain, all the shear, oh sorry, all the strain, both normal and shear strain in the z directions are zero. So if you simplify it further, if you do the, uh, do the calculation, again, just uh, put the values of the strain are zero, this one, zero, this one, zero, this one, zero, and do this math. What you get is, you can actually get two new form of C and D matrix. So this C and D, remember that they're the same C and D that we used for 3D problem or to relate a six component of strain with six components of st stresses but now these are reduced size three by three because we have three components in stresses and strain okay okay so we have uh, we, we have done we have done two steps we have um, we have uh, done these two steps. We have done D to epsilon. Also, we also did the relationship between epsilon and sigma. But remember, this the relationship that, that we developed between stress and strain, or this step, is for planar problem. Because we simplified our case. We simplified total number of components, stress components or strain component. And also, we reduced the total size of the C and D matrix. So. We have done this part, we have done this part, which is uh, for only for planar problems. But now only this part is left. How can we relate sigma or stress with force? So let's uh, go back where we finished. Okay, so from here, uh, to relate nodal force and displacement, um, which is our overall goal, nodal force and displacement, this is, uh, this is this, this relationship is our FEA equation, right? F equals to K and D. 
So to do this, we, we are trying to develop in different steps. We finished two steps. Now in the third step, we have to relate the stresses and force. So this is the last relationship that we need to develop. Okay. So we can use a work energy relationship or uh, equilibrium uh, equations, but uh, I will show you uh, how can we do it using work energy uh, principle. So by definition, uh, the work done on an element as a consequence of force applied at the node uh, times the corresponding node displacement is set equal to the strain energy within the element. So for example, we have uh, an element with three nodes, not, not this and this different. Uh, our main element, say this one, we have uh, an element one, two, three, three nodes, and each node has a certain uh, displacement and also some force in it in one two and three so if you multiply the force and displacement of each node and add them together and also consider the both direction force and displacement both x and y then the total is your work done and that quantity will be set equal to the strain energy of that element so this is the principle again okay. <clears throat> so uh, the work done on the element as a consequence of force applied at the nodes times the corresponding nodal displacement so this force applied to the node uh, can be in both x and y and you have to multiply it with the corresponding nodal displacement either in x or in y so that will be your work done and it will be set equal to the strain energy within the element that means once you apply the load to that element it will have some strain energy. We'll calculate that and we'll say that those two are equal. So figure this one shows the typical force and displacement or stress strain curve of a linear uh, uh, elastic material. Uh, so this area under the curve is either you can call it as a work done uh, by this force, force times displacement, this area, or the strain energy because of this stress and this strain. So uh, from definition, the work done uh, by force P and that goes through displacement D and for a linear elastic uh, problem is half P times delta, which is the area of that triangle. But now our force is a vector. It's not only P, it's, but it's vector um, a force applied to each node and both x and y direction. So uh, we write it in a vector form, that this force vector, and the displacement also you know that our uh, triangular element has displacement in both x and y in all three nodes. So we also write the displacement in a vector form. So if you multiply this, that half displacement times force, which is actually this, is our work done. And this shows that what D means, if you look at this D, D is nothing but the same previous D that we used before, and that is the nodal displacement vectors. It has six components. Force is now a force, nodal force vector also has six components, one in X, one in Y, and it's for all three nodes. So this two means you are actually multiplying U1X with F1X, u1y with f1y, u2y, f2y, and add them together and times half. So that will be your total work done because of the nodal force and corresponding displacement. And strain energy density at a point, at any point in a linear elastic material is half sigma times epsilon. So this f and d will give you work done and sigma and epsilon will give you the strain energy. So the formula is similar, half sigma times epsilon, but again, remember or note that this sigma is not just one sigma, but it's a vector. It has three components. Epsilon is not a single epsilon, it's a vector and it has three components. And, and that will, this quantity is strain energy density, that means per unit volume, strain energy. So to get the total strain energy, you need to actually integrate it over the volume. So if you take this quantity but integrate it over the volume, you will get the total strain energy. 
but remember that if these two both these two are vectors so I write it in a vector form that half integration over the volume strain vector times stress vector and the strain vector uh, these three components in the strain in X strain in Y strain in XY is, is the shear strain and similarly Sigma also has three components Sigma X Sigma Y and the shear stress okay so we have this uh, so we we have derived the relation between uh, st strain with displacement and stress with strain so but from equation 9 and 12 if you go back to equation 9 you will see that that shows the relationship between epsilon with nodal displacement by a matrix B this is a big B and we talked about this uh, what is the uh, form of this B matrix so epsilon is B times nodal displacement but we need E transpose if you take E transpose we need E transpose in equation 16 so if you take E transpose you will get D transpose times B transpose also we know what the sigma is from equation 12 sigma is uh, uh, sigma is d times epsilon if you go back to six uh, equation 12 let's go back to equation 12 sigma is d times epsilon right sigma is d times epsilon so we have uh, sigma equals to d times epsilon and epsilon is b times d so sigma equals to d times b times d which is the total sigma so we can actually substitute this quantity epsilon in here and sigma in there and get the total final form so if you substitute it to this equation you get half integration volume um, epsilon transpose is this D transpose B transpose okay so this whole thing is epsilon transpose but in displacement and B form and the whole thing here D B D D is big D B times nodal displacement is your Sigma so this whole three matrices uh, multiplication of these three matrices is giving you the Sigma and it is the uh, uh, integration over the volume so this is our total strain energy the total strain energy and we have uh, equation for total work done which is equation 15 so if you equate equation 15 with equation 17 you can write this and you can write this now note one thing that D is the nodal displacement this is, this is not a function of V not a function of volume so we can take this one out of the integral and cancel it. So D, D again nodal displacement or U1x, U2x, U3x, U1y, those are not functional volume. So that is a constant term. You can take it out of the integral and cancel it in both sides. Also cancel half. Actually, I should have removed this half. Okay, so you will get F equals to this whole thing times d again this d we take out of the integral so now is it a familiar form yes it is this is what we wanted to do uh, to derive the uh, if a formula formula for a 2d continuum uh, element so we have force vector is related to the displacement vector or nodal displacement vector by some quantity and we call it stiffness matrix so this whole integral thing integral of B transpose D B D V is our stiffness matrix so let's see if we can simplify it a little further uh, we talked about this that D B sorry B matrix is constant matrix it depends only on the geometry of the element so that doesn't depend on V D V or volume also okay so you can take it out of the integral how about the D matrix D matrix if you look back to equation uh, so let's take this equation a D matrix for a plane strain problem all these are constant mu E all these are constant so D is also a constant matrix 
So we can actually take all these quantities, B transpose T B out of the integral, and we can write it like this. Okay? And the integration will be over the volume, and the volume of the triangle is nothing but T times dA. So T is the thickness, and dA is the uh, integral over the area. And now, even if your T is constant, so we can have this one, that your stiffness matrix is nothing but B transpose dB, which is all constant, T is constant, and if you integrate the whole uh, over the element, you get the triangular element area. A, sig, uh, delta and we know what delta is so it's, it's very simple but this is a very general case that we have a linear element uh, we define a linear interpolation function thickness is constant but if your thickness is not constant then you actually have to do this integral you have to do this integral and uh, solve this um, problem so this is uh, pretty much all I wanted to discuss. So we have um, the relationship between a force vector and displacement vector. Force vector, remember that this, this is nodal force vector. Uh, each node has two force, in one in x, one in y. So it's total six. Similarly, displacement vector has six components. Uh, each node has displacement in x and displacement in, in y. And uh, you have three total nodes, so total six displacement vector and these two are related by this quantity which is our stiffness matrix so there's some uh, mm, uh, some additional information is given if you read it is fairly simple but uh, let me explain the last one if you look at the very beginning uh, when we defined our orientation of the um, of the of the element which is um, this figure this is arbitrary orientation and uh, it doesn't depend whether it's um, we did not take everything is based on the global frame of reference x1 y1 x2 y2 everything is from the global also the b matrix and uh, epsilon and fd whatever you calculate it will actually calculate in the global this frame of reference so what we did before in trust problem that we transfer the local frame to the global frame and then assemble it but that's what we you don't need to do it in this case so everything is already converted into a global frame and you can assemble all the stiffness matrices of each triangular element directly without any rotation okay so i hope uh, this uh, will help you to understand the theory and um, i will post this video in YouTube and also the lecture as a PDF if you have any question just email me thank you